Hello everyone, this is Kenny Bruni from Cambridge Tech. So we are almost through with the Django project, I mean for this block application. But then there are some few things I would want us to do as far as customization is concerned. So if you recall, one of the things I made mention when I started my Django inventory management system application was the fact that, yes, Django is very popular and apps like Spotify was built on Django. So I want to show you something. Now, let me go into my Spotify account. All right, so I'm inside my Spotify account. Let me try and log in. So inside of my Spotify account, this is a login page. And as you can see, this is the forget password link we have over here. And that's similar to what we are trying to mimic over here. So forget password. Now, when I click on this link, you can see I'm directed to the password reset okay, page. And clearly with the application too, we are directed to the password reset page. Okay. The only difference we have over here is the name we choose. All right, nothing too much of a difference. Now let me type in my password over here. And I'll click on this. I'm not a robot. Later on, we are going to see how we incorporate recapture into our application. All right. So when I click on send, now we are redirected here and it says password reset. A message has been sent um, to the mail with instructions to reset your password. And that's exactly what we did when we did this but i'm going to show you hours later on so let's come back into the mail and let me refresh so as you can see the mail has arrived okay so when i click on this you can clearly see that this is a message that comes in all right so uh, no need to worry you can reset your password uh, your spotify password by clicking on the link below your username is this now by default so let me go back and show you something so this is what we did with postscribers okay so by default this is what django gives you but as you can see spotify has been able to customize the message that comes in here and that's exactly what you are going to do okay so you want to customize the message that comes in here you don't want to go with a default message and it's very important because maybe you may have a slogan with your brand that you want to include over here okay so that's exactly what you are going to look out for so i've already built that one out so let's come back here and i'm going to type in my email address so kbruni123 at gmail.com when i click on reset password i get this message over here okay and i said i was going to change this yes so as you can see this is exactly what we are trying to mimic over here now when i come back over here we see that we have prescribers a new mail has come in now there's a little bit of a customization i'm going to show you what django gives us right out of the box and how we have customized things over here so clearly we see hello kenneth okay what django gives us which is this one does not um salute or does not even greet us okay so the message this is what django gives us it says you are receiving this mail because you requested a password reset for your user account at whatever we have over here and now the message i'm displaying over here is we received a request to reset the password for your account for this email address click on the link below so clearly the messages are different and we are displaying different things all together and as you can see we have sincerely the prescribers team and if you should come here we have uh thanks for using our site there your url is going to appear over here team okay so you can see that there's a little bit of a difference over here and clearly this is what we want later on we are going to see how we add the recapture so in order to set out to what we've planned to do i'm going to go into my desktop we are going to create the message first of all so this is a .txt file i just created and over here we have um, the auto escape template tag is set to off and we are ending it over here and this is a message that we would want okay so we can type in anything over here so like i demonstrated to you we have hello and we are passing the user dot username over here so if the user is kenneth we are going to see hello kenneth over here if the user is john we are going to see hello john over here uh, we received a request to reset the password for your account for this email address click on the link below to set a new password and there's a link so the link is going to have protocol forward slash the domain 
and the url and you are going to pass in the password underscore reset underscore confirm that route over here and you're also going to pass the uidb64 um, as uidb and we're also going to pass in the token as well so this is something we are quite used to based on the last video then we put out any information you want to have over here and your password i mean your username is this is going to pick up from the database and render the username over here then we are saying sincerely the prescribers team and we are ending the auto escape off over here so now that we have this message done over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this okay and put it inside my prescribers application folder then what i need to do is to actually put this inside so let me cut this over here i'm going to put it inside the templates okay I'm going to use this and put this right over here because you want this to be rendered in one of the views over here which we are going to look at very soon so let's go into vs code so into VS Code, when I open up templates and go into users, we have this password. Let me open this up. We have password underscore message dot txt. It can be any name, but we are using password underscore message. You can choose to name it password mail or anything. And this is exactly what we had displayed over there. So I'm going to close this. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create, we are going to go into the users app and go into views.py and we are going to create a function based view over here okay remember when we go into urls.py we are rendering this okay class based views as views and we are going to change one what we are going to change is actually the password reset okay the first one the password reset we are going to overwrite it and use our own um, custom way of doing it so i'm going to call in a function over here so i'll call def and i'll call this password underscore um reset underscore request now i'm using this name because i don't want it to conflict with the password reset okay and i'm going to have or i'm going to pass in a request over here and we are going to return render and we pass in the render method over here as the first parameter and the template is now going to be users slash password underscore reset okay like this dot html then i'm going to pass in a context dictionary over here because eventually we are going to work with a context and let me pass in that variable over here so this is what we have and the password underscore reset dot html is basically what we have over here okay password underscore reset dot html that's going to render that form so after doing this, we need to create a corresponding URL for this because you are rewriting the whole thing. So we'll come in here and instead of, and this is it, okay, the password underscore reset. And instead of going through the odd views, we are now going to go through the views dots because that's what we have over here. All right, so I'm going to clear this and you have to be very careful over here. So let's clear this over here and let me bring this up okay so i'm going to say views dot and i'll call the password requests okay like this and i'll put in a trailing comma over here and i think as far as the route is concerned we are good to go so i'll save this and we have some kind of a working document so when i come back into my browser and let me go back to login and when i click on this it says the error okay so the function uh, has a metadata attribute all right so we seem to have an issue over here so let's go back into our code and see exactly what's happening so inside of our view we are returning render okay so this is supposed to be a request i think most of you might have seen me do that okay so this is supposed to be a request so if i'm to come back refresh click on this we are supposed to see that form display over here but currently we don't have that form because we are rewriting the whole setup all right so in order to get the form we are going to run some few imports so inside our views.py i'm quickly going to run all the imports and later on I explain 
for each one of them what it is going to do so already um we have render and redirect over here so we are going to move on with the other ones so the obvious one i'm going to run uh, run is i'm going to say from django dot call dot mail i want to import send mail okay so we are importing this send me method over here and we also want to import back header error okay so this back header error is going to um, throw in an error whenever there's a problem then we are also going to import so i'm going to say from from django dot http i'm going to import http response so we need this http response for some obvious reasons we are going to look at as we move along then the next import we are going to do is i'm going to have from django and this is very important this particular one from django dot country dot auth dot forms i want to import and we are importing the password reset form so as you can see this password reset form is what is going to be rendered in our view okay now when we use the password reset as view method okay and passing the template name that is where django automatically handles it for us but over here we are using the password reset form then the next one is um, we want to also import user over here so i'm going to say from django dot country dot auth dot models i want to import the user model over here because of what you are going to do we are going to grab the email address and work with it then we are also going to import from django dot template dot loader we are going to import render to html or render to string okay and this is going to convert um what we have over here okay what we've placed over here into that kind of view that we want in our mail then the next one we are going to do is we are going to say from django the imports are becoming many but then these are important so from django.db dot models dot and i'm going to say query query underscore utils i want to import q and q is going to help us as we move along i'm going to show you then i'm going to say um another from django dot contrib dot auth dot tokens i want to import default token generator this is perhaps one of the reasons why using um what has been given to you as default is simply going to um, avoid all these headache but then it is important if you want to customize our own way we have to go through the hard process but then as you can see this um, tokens default token generator is going to help us generate that token so that the email will be sent in a more secured manner remember when we put out our route we had the uidb and the token so after importing this token you're also going to import the uidb as well then i'm going to say from the django dot utils dot encoding i want to import false bytes okay so this is going to um, encode a uh, url into some bytes that is going to be rendered in a more secured manner all right so now that we have this import we are good to go so now you can actually have access to the password reset form okay so i'm going to come inside here and i'm going to uh, pass in the password reset form but like you always know we are going to use the post method so i'm going to say if um request dot method is equal to post then i'm going to say my password i'm going to say password form password form is going to be equal to the password reset form okay so i'm going to call this and i'm going to pass in the request dot post over here all right else 
you've seen this a number of times else i'm just going to say the password resets or the password form is simply going to be equal to the password reset form just like this and i can pass this in my context dictionary so i'm going to say the password underscore form as the key and the value is going to be the password underscore form so remember this context is being passed out over here so if i'm to go into my html okay this was what was given by default so i'm just going to change this into password underscore form over here and i'm applying the crispy uh, filter over here to start things up so just after doing this if i'm to come back into my view over here and come and refresh and see that we have this email showing up over here now an normal circumstance if you are to type in and click on send it's supposed to do something but clearly we are not quite done with the logic over here so in order to proceed with the rest of the logic we are going to go back into our views.py we need to continue so now we are going to call in a variable we are calling data and we are calling in the password form okay dot clean data remember we've seen this in some videos i've made in the past we are cleaning the data and we want to get a particular um so we are doing clean data dot get you want to get a particular data okay and the data that you want to get is the email so once you get this email this email will be saved inside of the data variable we have over here now the next thing to do is we need to um, create in a variable that we are going to call a user email so i'm going to say user email and user email is now going to be equal to the user okay remember we've already imported user right over here okay from django.contrib.other models we are importing user so inside over here you are seeing the user dot object and you want to filter so dot object dot filter and you want to filter by this queue remember we've imported queue and we are going inside of that and we are going to pass in the email and we are going to set it to data okay this data we have over here good so we are going to run a for loop over here so we are going to say if the user mail okay so if the user mail dot exists before we run the for loop if the user mail dot exists then we are going to run the for loop over here so i'm going to say for user in the user mail so as far as this for loop goes then we want to have the subject of our mail remember in my other videos i showed you how to send a mail and this is basically like trying to put everything together over here so we are going to specify a subject so the subject of the mail is going to be i mean it can be anything so i'm saying password request and the email underscore template underscore name so the email template name and this is going to be a path okay so this is going to be a path and where am i going to see this path this path is actually going to point to this um mail that we have over here and we are going to say users forward slash the password underscore message dot txt remember they said dot txt file okay as you can see over here so that's going to be the email template name or for the path good now after doing this we are still within that for loop over here we need to create in a variable and i'm going to call this variable parameters so we are going to specify some parameters over here and this is going to be a dictionary so within the parameter dictionary or the parameters dictionary we are going to specify a number of things and as we move along we are going to see so first of all we are going to specify the email and the email is going to be user dot email okay so remember this user variable is looping through this uh, users and as you can see we are getting it from the data we passed in over here so we want to set out the parameters and we want to get the user email all right after doing this there are other parameters that we want to handle so we are going to look out for the domain so the domain is now going to be equal to or we put it like this and the domain as we have over here what we have over here as 
Um, so yeah we are going to paste this domain over here let me just clear this one off because we are also going to specify a protocol so this is going to be the domain okay then the next one is going to be the site name so i'm going to do site underscore name and the site name is going to be the name of the website so in this case we are going to say postscribers okay so postscribers all right, so we have postscribers showing up over here. We forgot to bring a trailing com over here. And let's do that. So the next parameter is going to be the UIDB. Remember, we need to pass in the UID. Okay, so the UID is now going to be the URL, URL safe underscore base uh, 64 underscore encode. And we are going to pass this and call in the false bytes and over here we are going to say the user dot primary key so that we'll be able to generate that particular uidb then um, i think we seem to have a problem over here i'll come and sort this one out but then let's continue with the rest of the parameters so the next one is going to be token and token is going to be we are going to call the default token generator okay then we are going to call within this make token so make token and we are going to pass in the user so we are going to make token based off this user that we are grabbing in here then the next parameter is going to be the protocol so our protocol is going to be http okay or https yeah i guess so and let me put out the trailing come over here yeah we are done with the parameters but we seem to have an issue where it says undefined variable and let me quickly sort that one out so i think going through this we forgot to bring out an import over here so i'll quickly come in here and i'm going to say from django dot utils sorry from django dot utils dot http want to import the base okay the url safe base encode okay we don't want decode you want encode all right so this is what we want and after importing this we are going to see that this is going to be sorted out for us okay i think for this one we also need to bring out the port number over here and i think we don't need the https over here as well okay so we are going to move on so now we have our parameters set out for us now remember this uidb is being computed for us okay and the token as well and these are the parameters that are going to be passed in here the uidb64 and the token so having done this remember i also made mention of the fact that we have the email underscore template underscore name and that's being grabbed from our own message that we have typed in there so what i'm going to do is we are going to continue with the rest of the parameters so i'm going to come outside here and i'm going to say email so the email is going to be render to strange remember we've imported re uh, render to strange over here so the first parameter i'm going to pass in here is the email uh, template name the email template name and that's what is going to link up to this particular template we have over here then the next thing i'm going to pass in here is a parameters okay so these parameters we specified in this dictionary is going to also be passed in here then i'm going to put out a try okay so i'm going to say try and i'm going to say send mail so this send mail is going to take in the subjects the mail the sent from the received and this is exactly what i showed in my other video i'll leave the link in the description below and that's exactly what i'm showing up in the notification over here so within this send mail method you are going to pass in the subjects all right the subject is already a variable created over here for us okay we've created it password request and we are going to pass in the email the email address okay and we are also going to pass in the mail we are sending this from and 
but now we can leave it blank we can leave it blank because in our settings.py let me show you okay in postscriber settings.py remember we specified the email host user as we have over here so we need not to type in the email address over here so we can leave it blank over here as an empty string and the recipient email is next so the recipient email is now going to be based on the user dot email remember the user dot email is being captured over here okay the user dot email is being passed in as a parameter here as email so we are grabbing it and putting it over here then we are also going to pass in fail silently is equal to we are going to specify false over here all right so this fail silently is very important because kind of it kind of protects us from um maybe a wrong email address that has been sent so that our system will not crash all right then we are going to put out an exception over here so let me go outside this um indentation and accept we are going to return an http response and that's why we put out the http response over here and i'm going to say invalid header so if the header is wrong this is what we are going to see an http response all right then i think the next thing we will need over here is to return redirect okay so where do we want to redirect to so we want to redirect to the password reset done view remember in our urls.py let me show you after going through this password reset which we are modifying currently we go to the password reset done and the password reset done is what displays that flash message over here so i'm going to copy this url over here so i'll do a control c i'll come back here and return redirect i will paste this over here we are done so let's try this out and see so our dev server is still running so let's come back here and start the whole process again so we've forgotten our password i'll click on this link and i'll type in my password kbruni123 at gmail.com so when i click on reset you see the password reset form has no attributes clean data all right so the thing we are missing out over here is we needed to put or try and check if this was valid so i'm going to say if the password form dot is valid so we are passing the dot is valid method on this and this is very important for all our forms then all that we need to do is to grab everything over here and indent it so we are going to indent everything over here so i'll grab this and indent this all right so if the password reset form that we've just created out of this password reset form is valid then we are grabbing the data over here so let's try and see this one all right so i'll refresh let me start from the very top so i'll come in here forget password i'll type in my password kbrony123 at gmail.com and i'll click on this it says it doesn't have the dot clean data all right so let's just modify this instead of using the dots get let's put out this angle i mean square brackets over here so that we get the data directly so i'll refresh and i'll come back here restart the process again click on forget password type in this click on this okay so this one went through and if you should come over here and and come and refresh this we are going to see that we have this new mail over here and this was exactly what we sent and this i mean zero minutes ago so he says hello you received a password um i mean we received a request to reset your password for the account and this is exactly what we showed over there so when i click on this link this one sends me to the password reset underscore confirm view all right so we've overrided this whole thing and we are trying to render some new stuff over here now let's try and make um some i mean wild modification over here so i'm just going to say hello Cambrone. um this is Cambrotech um modifying the password resets for prescribers 
all right so we are adding this message into it so that it will be too obvious that we've indeed made some modification over here so i'll come back here and start the whole process again i'll click on forget password and i'll type in my password once again i'll click on reset password and of course a mail will be sent so when i come back here you can see that this mail has been sent and as you can see we have this new message with exactly what you just typed over here this is a cambridge tech um modifying password for reset so clearly um we've modified it and we can actually come in here and come and set in a new password so let me set in a new password over here and i'll type in what i just typed over here so reset password and now i can log in for the username and my password is going to be the password i just set out for so when i click on login i now have access to this page so clearly this is going to be the first part of it the second part of this video is going to be where we are going to add the recapture to also enforce another layer of security now if you find this tutorial very interesting there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel kindly subscribe to cambro tech and don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified also share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it Bye bye